get up. Hello, everybody. If you're here and can hear me, trying to get up. Operational, trying a different mix this time. Here we are, live, right on. I'll wait a few minutes. And uh, Suela Da Silva, hello. How you doing? Glad you can make it. Uh, I got feedback. Hold on a second. I got to turn down some volumes. And uh, hello, everybody. I'm trying a little different setup tonight. This will be a first. So uh, bear with me here. As you guys can see, we got the CEO of My Life t-shirt on. We're going to talk about creating wealth. Better, how to get better credit, business credit, a few items, stimulus checks, anything you guys want to talk about, we can talk about this evening. Because uh, we're going to start off with a few different things. And I'm going to try it right now to see if it works. I'm going to do some transitional things back and forth to pages tonight. So everybody, stay tuned. I'm getting the hang of this uh, live programming, so I'm trying a little bit different things with the OBS software. And just so everybody knows, we'll wait a little bit longer, but I'm going to switch to the screen and I'll uh, see how it all works out. So, all right, beautiful. That's what I'm checking out today. So I'm just adding a little bit different twist than normal. So uh, welcome everybody. And again, Please like and subscribe if you haven't already. And we're going to talk about anything you want to talk about. I don't mind. But uh, I'm going to talk about a few things. And I'll probably wait a few more minutes because there's certain things. You know it's hard out here. Everybody wants to, you know, help out whichever way they can. And quite frankly, a friend of mine, I'm from California most of the time. That's where I found my taxes for the state, but sometimes I'm in Florida, the other state that I live in, and um, they're trying to help out minority black-owned businesses. So there's a friend of mine who's going to, I'm probably going to have him on one of these days. I just never have in over a year, even though uh, a lot of people might be in the music business and want to learn how to get into the music business and promote their music. And I have a legendary uh, friend from the music business, and he's now the CEO and president of the Black Chamber of Commerce, the California Black Chamber of Commerce in Sacramento, and they're trying to raise funds to help minority-owned businesses. So I'm going to go to that screen shortly and uh, give you guys an idea on what's going on. Hello. How you doing, Juvie Lover? Thriller Alley. Navy Federal, DCU have promotions for new membership referrals. Yes. Uh, uh, Thriller Alley, hit me up at Eric at StopStrugglingNow.com. And uh, send me your uh, first, well, actually for DCU, I need your first and last name and an email address. And for Navy Federal, I just need your first name and an email address. Navy Federal has tightened up uh, their membership drive here. They started uh, changing things on their website as well. They're not accepting any business uh, checking accounts. New business checking accounts cannot be opened. And they're changing up and being a little bit more strict on who's going to be allowed to sign up. But we can always try. I have the referral link that I can send you after this uh, live feed. I'll go to my email. And again, email is eric at stopstrugglingnow.com. And uh, you can hit me up anytime. Joshua Felder, what's going on, man? Thank you. Thank you, and everybody, thank you for your support. We're making an impact here because anytime YouTube allows you to have memberships on your site, and that's why now there's a join button next to the subscriber button where people can help out monthly, that is pretty awesome. And normally, a site that only has 5,000 subscribers wouldn't get a join button. They used to require you to have like 30,000 subscribers before you'd be able to offer memberships. And we're going to have uh, some live feeds going in there that I'm not going to do on the open format. And I'll be doing a few other surprises as well, even though they're not listed as uh, part of the membership. 
but you know how we do it here. This is a no guru zone. We help out everybody. And so if uh, you're a, uh, a part of the membership, I'll even throw in some extra stuff that I normally don't do on the feeds. So anyhow, ladies and gentlemen, let's talk about this uh, donation. So I got to put this up here. So uh, you'll see it shortly on the screen. I'll get it up. But uh, as you all know, it's awfully hard out here. And there's, like I was saying, the, uh, the uh, California Chamber of Commerce, as you can see on the screen, you can see right here, it's uh, everybody pitch in. And they're trying to raise $10 million. And so far, what do you see? You see that only $10,325 has been raised. And you, some might be saying, well, why is it that there's uh, over 267 donors and there's only $10,000? Well, because the Everybody Pitch In platform is based on people only donating $5. That's all they're asking for. Because the bottom line is, if 2.5 million people put in $5, now you'd reach your $10 million goal. So that was the whole premise on it. Unfortunately, trying to reach 2.5 million people, that's awfully hard. So I'm putting in my two cents, since it's a friend of mine. And like I said, you'll see him when I get back to Cali, you'll see him. Uh, in one of the videos. In fact, I'm going to actually do it. Um, I'll make a point because now I know he's going to be down in, in SAC. So when I get back, I'm going to make it a point to go down and we're going to shoot video and it's going to be about music business and uh, everything you would want to know. So you're not going to want to miss that because you'll be able to ask questions if we run it on a live feed. You'll be able to ask questions uh, about any music biz, promotion, artist, development, anything like that. Uh, he had a, a deal with Warner Brothers back in the day. He was able to have his own groups, be able to sign people, had a budget, and he was able to uh, write for other stars at the time on the same label as Prince. Uh, I remember one morning he called me at, uh, it must have been 5 a.m., 4 a.m. in the morning, and mind you, we're just friends. I'm not in the music biz, and uh, they were writing songs for Al B. Sure in New York. So he, I was like, why are you calling me so early? He's like, because I got to be up. And they had a deal where, you know, they had to send over songs and things like that for Al B. Sure at the time. So, uh, amongst other people. But that was the whole deal. So that's what we're trying to do. I'm helping them out, get all eyes, as many eyes as I can to help out. And like I said, if you can just donate $5, that helps. I realize, due to the pandemic, that it's awfully hard. But, uh, you know, in this day and age, what is it hard? You know, people are out of work. There's a, I'll give you the numbers in case you don't know, because we're going to talk about creating wealth here. But you have to understand what you're working with, ladies and gentlemen. If you know 60 percent of the population makes thirty nine dollars, I mean, thirty nine thousand dollars a year or less. I say this in almost every live feed. If you know, 76 percent of Americans have less than a thousand dollars in their bank account you'd start realizing that there's only a certain segment of the population who is not living paycheck to paycheck. And it's a small minority. So when you start thinking of who makes over $40,000 a year, think about this. You would think $50,000 a year isn't much. But think about this. What if you knew 70% of the population doesn't make $50,000 a year? And most people know that it costs twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen hundred dollars just to rent around in America. Even in dumps, it could be seven, eight hundred, nine hundred a month, and you have to earn three times that amount usually in order to get qualified for places. So it's no wonder a majority of Americans are living paycheck to paycheck. Who's not living paycheck to paycheck? Those people that have started their extra streams of income. Those people who said, "I'm gonna." try to put in extra work. I'm going to work my 40 to 50 hours a week. But when I come home, I'm going to spend an hour a day on my, my stuff, my job, the CEO of my life. That's what we're talking about here. So we've been talking about for, what, a year and a half now. Some of you may be lucky enough to have started your businesses or started an extra stream of income or two. So right about now, you're saying, woo, thank God. 
that I actually have an extra 500 or an extra 1,000 or an extra 2,000 or extra 3,000 coming in. It takes work. But if you just put an hour or two towards your own life to try to create extra streams of income, then you have nothing to worry about. If five months goes by, you'll make it work. Six months go go by, you just keep doing it. Don't give up. Wash, rinse, repeat. Believe in yourself. And even if you don't believe in yourself, don't worry. Just keep going. And then eventually, if you just keep going and stay the course, all of a sudden you'll get a check. You'll get money coming in and then you'll be motivated possibly at that point and say, oh, wow, this could actually work. What if I did instead of an hour or two a day, what if I did three hours a day or three hours every two days, whatever the case may be. Joshua Felder, thank you very much, man. Oh, my God, man. Right on. WLL stock at 60 cents. That's a 30. What is that? 30, 40 percent on your money. Yeah, you should have held it. <laughs> hey man thank you very much for the donation Joshua Felder um, yeah I'm going to get into some stock talk because that's part of creating wealth okay I am actually looking at 5G as in 5G companies there's quite a few quite frankly because of the download speeds of 5G being like what 4,000 percent faster than Wi-Fi presently on your cell phones there's hundreds of millions of devices around the world that are going to have to be replaced with 5G phones well they don't have to be but they are going to be because the speed of 5G networks and once that gets all around which is going to be a slow rollout over time then 5G makes sense just like what else makes sense is AI technology artificial intelligence what else makes sense Vehicles on the road are going to be driving autonomous. So you should have autonomous companies you should be thinking of as well. So when you start talking about stocks, I start talking about, okay, this company that, that has a cheap stock, Ericsson, and my first name, E-R-I-C, Ericsson. It's like $8, $7, something like that a share. So, yeah, Joshua, I'm looking at that. There's also... Uh, uh, INSG can look at something like that ADI although I'm not a proponent of ADI because their stock share is already at hundred ninety five dollars a share I like to start a little bit lower than that with an upside because of the exposure at a hundred hundred and five dollars they don't give out dividends anyhow so it doesn't really matter so I basically go with a little more upside and maybe a smaller company even like Nokia's in the 5g play their stock isn't doing too well. Ericsson's stock not doing too well. So if you want to create wealth, when the, when the stock market goes down because the one percenters messed up, guess what happens? You can take advantage. A lot of people should have taken advantage when it dropped down to Dow Jones, dropped down to 19,000 points. That wasn't seen since 2016. And people still didn't invest in anything. And now Boeing, Disney, Apple, uh, Tesla, all these guys are starting to climb back up. And anybody, you would have, you would have already made over 50 to 60% back on your money. You would have profits already. And all those companies I mentioned actually give dividends. So you could potentially have received a dividend check in your account, potentially at the end of this month or maybe next month because they come every three months. We've been talking about creating wealth this is one way you can do it, and it's generational. So you pick these 500, uh, what, you, what, are you, what you call it, the Dow companies. Uh, just dropped my power cords. But uh, you, uh, you can pick Dow companies, so you don't have to invest in unknown companies. Like Joshua mentioned WLL, and uh, he's doing awesome Increasing, if you can make 30%, 40% on your money in a week, a month, uh, over the course of time, if you can keep repeating that, you don't have to be greedy. But you can't be greedy when your money's being held up in a 401k. You can't do anything when it's in a mutual fund. You work all these years, but you're just sliding 200, 300, 500, whatever amounts of money every month into a 401k retirement plan or a mutual fund retirement plan. 
and you don't have access to that money, but yet they're going to send you something that says, okay, you got 6% this year, you, you got 10% this year, or they could send you something that you got negative 5% this year, but what they don't send you is that notice that says, you know what, you had, we took out, uh, you had $1,000 in there, but, you know, we take out 2% a year, and it's $998. They don't mention that part, but they'll tell you you got 6% on your money, and they don't mention they siphoned off some of your funds. But meanwhile, if you had liquid assets, you had that $1,000, and you could have bought, like Joshua did, the WLL at $0.60, cents, and then when it went up to $0.93, cents, you could have said, okay, I'll sell it, you would now have $1,300 in your account. And that's 30% on your money. So you can't do that when you have your money locked up. You got to be CEO of your own life. That's the best policy these days. And you got to be liquid. So that's just something to think about. So again, thank you everybody for coming. Thank you for being here. And I appreciate it. So I'm going to go back over here to the screen and you know that uh, Tafosi Optics I always talk about because they uh, sponsor some things that I do and I just wanted to go over to the screen today because today is the Sunny 25 is the code, S as in Sam, U, N as in Nancy, N as in Nancy, Y, 25 and you get 25% off on a lot of their sunglasses right now and most of you know who have been subscribers for a while is it Tafosi they have sunglasses that are a hundred dollars twenty five dollars fifty dollars and of course they have sunglasses over a hundred but the thing is their glasses are affordable for everybody and a hell of a lot of them look nice so they pick and even have women sizes and women glasses and they have sizes of sunglasses that can fit the, your head, the way your eyes line up, whatever, they have different uh, frames, different size, st different styles that can help you out. So that's the beauty of Tafosi, and that's why I like them. So, uh, Joshua, man, the first time you're doing stocks, Life Media Pro, hey, man, how you doing? Thank you for coming, and I appreciate you always making comments. Uh, whenever I post videos, I appreciate your support. Uh, and uh, yeah, Joshua, my first time, I love it, man. I love it. I'm glad you took the plunge. Way to go. Even if it's a small plunge, people, you want to get into getting into keeping your mind right with uh, creating wealth with stocks. This is what the one percenters do. If you want to be a millionaire, if you want to be a person that's well off, let's just say well off, 200,000, 300,000 down the road. And you want to be well off and not have to worry that if a pandemic comes that you're, you know, worrying about where your next check's coming from or, you know, if you got to get back to work within two or three weeks or a month. You don't want to be in that position. You want to be able to say, OK, I have dividends coming in what month and those dividends could be uh, fifteen hundred bucks. You know, they could be a thousand dollars and you could be sitting there going, all right, all I do is I'll just get my I'll just keep my dividends instead of reinvesting them. So. You have kind of a, a lot of options. All right, Ali, thank you. I'll uh, be sending you an email after the live. I'll get an email to you for the NFCU uh, and DCU. And and everybody, uh, Joshua is seeing how he's admitted that it's his first time doing stocks. This is the whole point of Stop Struggling Now. I'm trying to help everybody understand the different streams of income. Everybody thinks real estate. So real estate is fine. But with real estate, there's an entry point. So you just can't walk in and get a condo or a house or even land for that matter. It's hard to walk in there and say, hey, I got a $500. Hey, I got $1,000. Hey, I have $20. You, you can't even start. But here with stocks, and by the way, everybody, there'll be a link down below. It's already in the description for Webull and Robinhood. Download Webull first. Once you register, meaning you give them all your information, you apply, they'll send you a free share of stock in about five to seven days. You don't have to deposit, but as soon as you deposit $100 or more, then they'll send you another free share of stock in five to seven days. And here's the best part. 
once you have a Webull or Robinhood account, you can share the link, just like I'm sharing the link with you. And as soon as people sign up or download the software and register, they'll send you a free share of stock. So you can turn this actually into a money-making adventure once you sign up by becoming an affiliate, so to speak, niche marketing, affiliate marketing, referral marketing, social media marketing, because that's what it's all about. So these are the kind of things that you can do, ladies and gentlemen. But back to Tafosi. Tafosi Optics, they're cool people. They're out of the ATL. That's where their headquarters are. And um, I uh, don't know what happened to the guy that was representing Tafosi that spoke to me. But now I have to call back in. And what I'm going to try and do is get some more uh, actual sunglasses from him so I can actually give a few away on the uh, on the. Stop Struggling Now YouTube channel, and I'll probably actually do it in the membership site since people are going to be kind enough to be members. So uh, that's where I'll probably give away a pair there or two, and then maybe another couple pairs um, on the open YouTube channel. But uh, to Fosi Optics, only today, Sunny 25. That's S U N as in Nancy, N as in Nancy, Y 25. You get 25% off any, almost any of the sunglasses. And they're already like $50, $75. So even if they were $100, now it's $75. Even if it was $50, now it's $38.50. So that's a hell of a deal. And it's only good till midnight tonight. So you guys, please uh, check that out. And um, we're talking about a bunch of things tonight. Because we're talking about building credit, as you know. Jimbo G, thank you. How you doing? Welcome. Glad to see you again. I appreciate your support as usual, man. Thank you so much. And uh, yeah, so back to the Webull Robinhood M1 Finance. There's a link down below. So please, if you have not thought about it or have not downloaded any of those softwares, please do it now. And like I said, register with Robinhood. Register with Webull. You got to complete your phone number. They have to do your uh, email address. You have to confirm those. That's when you'll be completely there. And then you'll see a link that you can share and help other people. And then if somebody signs up, then you'll get a free share of stock. So it just keeps going on and on. Pay it forward. Good karma. This is how you change generational wealth. Because I'll say it again if I haven't said it already. Think about all these superstars who signed contracts. They had the NFL draft. A lot of these guys in the first round, they have guaranteed money coming in. And you try to figure out how do athletes get broke, right? And you're sitting there, don't understand. If they knew at 19, 20, 21, 22, what most people do not know, they don't know at 19, 21, 22, they're listening to agents, go get a house, go get these uh, $100,000, $200,000 cars that go down in value. All your money, all that guaranteed money is gone. Before they even step on the court or before they step on the field, they're already sitting there going, okay, I got endorsements coming in, so they have more money. If every athlete just said, hey, just give me out of my million dollar or two million dollar bonus, just give me two hundred thousand dollars, put that in the Dow Jones, Dow 30. Uh, shares of stock, 30 companies, just give me $200,000 and only the ones that pay 7 to 10% interest or, or dividends every year. You guys do understand that if somebody got 7% in uh, dividend money every year on $200,000, that's, you might not think it's a lot, but that's $14,000. And if it's 20% where they can get 10%, now it's $20,000. Now he goes on about his business. Business of plan. He has basically $1,000 coming in, which may not be a lot when somebody gets a $2 million, you know, guaranteed bonus up front. But the fact of the matter is, in football, your life expectancy in football is only four years. Four to five years. So at four or five years, you're out. And now these guys are all broke, their cars are getting repossessed, their houses are going foreclosure, and they're sitting there going, I don't have any money. But if they would have put that money in there, they would have still been going, okay, I got this, this $2,000 a month coming in. 
because they would have reinvested their dividends probably. So now it would be even higher. So now instead of 20000 coming in, it could be thirty. And at least you got that coming in and you don't have to do anything else. So that's the whole thing about this. Hello there, Juan Bollinger. Thank you, man. Thank you for showing up again. I appreciate your support as usual. Thank you so much. Bowtie Nikki, thank you. Thank you for the comment, man. I'm glad you're loving it, and I'm glad you look at it as dope because that's what it is. A lot of people never hear none of this information while they're going to school. They don't hear anything about how to deal with creating wealth. All you hear is go to school, get a job. That's what most people are doing. And now you find yourself as part of these uh, people with the pandemic who are laid off, out of a job, and you're sitting there going, please, please, where's my stimulus money? Please, please, give me that free money. You're damn right. But nobody ever said, hey, while you're going to school, hey, get this extra job over here. You know? So uh, that's how it is, ladies and gentlemen. Nobody's going to come save you. Nobody's looking out for you. No matter what it looks like. The only people looking out for you is your family, your good friends. That's about it. These employers pretending to be your friend, pretending to talk about, oh, we're a family up in here. Yeah, well, when hard times comes, you ain't a family no more because they'll lay your ass off because they're going to look out for themselves. If they can't pay you or they don't want to pay you, then they gotta, they have to let you go. And they're not sitting there going, well, my, we got to worry about that family. You know, that's crazy. So, all right, Jimbo G. Yeah, everything's going well, man. Like I said, all is good. And everybody here, this is how we create wealth. You create wealth a few ways. Real estate. All right. The seven streams of income, like I always mention, is on average seven streams of income most millionaires have. All right. So some people would say, what are those streams of income? The streams of income could be you got a lawnmower and you have a landscaping job. That's one stream. Another stream, you invested in stocks, you have dividend income coming in, and that's another stream. You do music, you have royalties coming in, that's another stream. You do real estate, that's another stream. You invest in multifamily properties, you get an FHA loan. And the reason why I say FHA loan is because you can put down 3%. A lot of you live in these cities. You live in places in Georgia, in states, Georgia, Texas, Louisiana, Alabama, Mississippi. I mean, come on. Nebraska, Oklahoma, Ohio. You guys, you live in cities that they have three pl threeplex, fourplexes, because an FHA loan, you can only have up to four units. You live in places that you can find a duplex, a threeplex or a fourplex for less than a hundred thousand dollars, and all you could you could pay three point five percent down, get an FHA loan. It'll probably cost you four percent down after additional fees, and you could easily only have like a six hundred dollar a month note, and you're renting out stuff like two or three hundred dollars, five hundred, six hundred dollars, and you could have positive cash flow for five six hundred dollars a month. Yeah, excuse me. I keep dropping my power cord on my phone. Juan Ballinger, thank you so much for the donation, man. I appreciate it. Off. I got all kind of stuff going on at this, this tonight. But yeah, you guys, you can do FHA loans in all these little locations. You might think you don't need that much money, but let's let's put things in perspective. If you found a $100,000 duplex, fourplex, threeplex, you only need $4,000 down to get in if you have an FHA loan and you only have to put down $3.5, $3,500. There's going to be some points as they call it. Uh, I'll use real estate terms, points that you got to pay for the loan processing and get under right of funding. So, you know, it might be $4,500, $4,000. But the fact of the matter is that's all you need. You don't need 20% down. All right. You don't need that. You could do with that, the only caveat to this is you have to live in the, one of the units. That's why most of the time you try and get a fourplex or a threeplex because you want the other two or three units to pay for your unit so you live there for free. And in fact, there's somebody on the internet right now uh, on YouTube, Graham Stephan, who lives in California. The guy's like a millionaire, but guess what? He lives in a duplex. <laughs> most people don't even know it, that he bought 
a duplex, lived in one side for a year, and uh, that's how he's doing it. And California, of course, the reason why I didn't mention California is because uh, California, uh, did we get disconnected? Okay. In California, we, uh, in California, it costs more for real estate properties. So therein lies the situation. So that's why I mentioned these other states where properties don't cost that much. And some of you might be sitting there going, well, Eric, what can I do? I don't live in those other states. But don't be wrong. You can, you can actually do deals. You can buy property. You can live in Georgia and buy property in Ohio. You can go cross state lines. You, property is deeded. So you can get property no matter where you live. So don't think that's a holdup. All right? Don't think anything like that. So some of you don't even, most of people didn't even know that you can get an FHA loan for 3.5. They're thinking they need 20,000 down. Now here's what's gonna happen though, just so I can keep you up to date on everything that's gonna happen with real estate. So your first loan, let's say you, you're happy that you got that loan. Okay, that's one of your first properties. When you try and get a second property, that's where you may come into issues because they may want that 20 to 25% down. But it may not because you might be able to use that other property as collateral. There's all kinds of things that can happen once you start with your first property. And keep in mind, when you buy a property, it's how you go in is how you're going to make your money. In other words, when you bought the property, you have to have an exit plan. Don't just buy property because you're thinking it's cool to own real estate. That's not how it works. You have to calculate what exactly you're going to do. You have to sit there and say, okay, that $100,000 property, I know presently that they're renting it for, I'll use simple numbers. Well, let's just say, even though this may not be the number, but every unit is $1,000 a month. So that means I make $4,000 per month. We make $48,000 per year. 50% is probably going to be on expenses and another 10. So basically we're going to keep out of the 40, uh, 48,000, we're going to keep 20, 22,000. So I would go to a bank and tell them, okay, I'm going to raise the rent up to, uh, once it goes up to 1200, your property value has increased. So now you could actually go in and possibly refi it for like, instead of 100, you could say, hey, can you give me uh, 120? Now you have $20,000 in your pocket, and now you can go down and buy another property with 20% down and get another property for if it's $100,000. And that's how you leverage yourself. That's, but start small. You don't have to listen to these gurus out here telling you uh, 15 unit, 20 unit, 30 units, I don't even look at nothing under 60 units. Some of y'all might know who I'm talking about who talks this crazy nonsense. And then turns around and asks people to invest. Yeah, it's pretty easy talking all that garbage when you got like, you know, thousands of people sending in their life savings and then you telling them that you're going to give them a dividend. And then you tell them now it's a pandemic and, well, I can't give you your dividends. Some of y'all might know who I'm talking about all that garbage but anyhow start small if you can't start large and most people can't start large so you start somewhere even if you have to get a single family home some people start like that but I prefer if you're gonna to try to be in the real estate game you have to exponentially up you have to say I'm gonna buy one two three houses or one two a two plex three plex four plex if you're gonna start with the FHA program now if you have 20 or 30 or forty thousand dollars sitting around then you could say, okay, where's that eight plex at? Where's that four, six, whatever. But always keep in mind, you have to know what your net operating income is and things of that nature before you purchase it because you don't want to go in there and then find out that you can't even meet what your uh, expenses are from the rents. You have to have, make sure, you have to do your due diligence. You have to be the CEO of your life. If you want to be a superstar, you want to be a one percenter, so that's all I'm trying to tell you. Just uh, stay the course. So we talked about real estate. We talked about stock markets. Uh, we've talked about royalties. That's three streams of income. We can also talk about 
when you start a business. So let's say social media marketing, which a lot of people are doing. There's people on Instagram making a lot of money. There's people on TikTok making a lot of money. There's people using Facebook ads to make a lot of money. There's people on YouTube making a lot of money. Social media is the way to go. You can monetize your life. A lot of you are shy and can't figure out what, how to make extra streams of income. Some of you are OCs, ordinary citizens. You sit there and think you might not be able to monetize, but think about this. I, I used this example the other day. I said, what about the guy that a, a paints cars for a living? What if he filmed that and then started posting it up? Other people are painting cars and figuring out how to do body work and things like that. Other people will probably come watch who's trying to figure out how to paint, do body work, and do certain things with cars. You're an auto mechanic. You could be showing people how to fix their cars. That would save people money. You're thinking about, hey, I'm just nobody, and but you know how to cook food. But yet, how many people have started a cooking channel? These are the simplest examples that I can use. And most people are saying, well, I don't really have any content. Well, you walking around going to stores shopping is content these days. Because everybody likes these shiny objects. You go to the store, you go to the Nike uh, outlets, the Foot Locker, and you go up in there and you buy tennis shoes and t-shirts and you can show people this, that, and the other and how much they cost. That's content. You have to monetize yourself. That's the easiest stream. And then you just make sure you're on all the social media outlets. That's all you have to do. And then you just keep going the course. Let's face it. I started with one video, had zero subscribers. I started with 10 videos, probably only had 20 subscribers. After 100 videos, only had 1,000 subscribers. So it takes time and you have to put in the work. But it helps if you love what you're doing. It helps if you're happy. Because if you're not happy doing what you're doing, paycheck doesn't really matter. Because I'm going to tell you right now, I haven't had to show up to work in over 30 years. I haven't worked 9 to 5 in a long time. So when people are sitting there going to work, that is hard work. You have to get up at 6, 7 in the morning, get prepared. And if you have children, you're sitting there having to spend time with the children, getting them ready as well. Then you come home, and now you have children now you have to deal with that as well. They have, you have to get their homework done. They have to, you have to pay attention to them. You don't have much time for yourself. Next thing you know, you have to go to bed, fix dinner, go to bed. But what you should be doing is thinking between 9 p.m. and 6 a.m. in the morning is nine hours. Nobody sleeps nine hours. So if you spent one hour dedicated to saying, hey, I'm clearing off this desk. This is my spot over there. And wink, wink, it's a tax write-off when you designate a certain amount of square footage in your house. So that's right. It's a tax write-off, ladies and gentlemen. So when you know that, Romeo May, how you doing? Yes, Romeo May, it is okay to invest in this market. What's the worst that can happen? It goes up and it goes down. You just have to be prepared. But anyhow, back to the subject at hand. You create your own streams of income and that extra hour a day or hour every two days, you just stick to it. You clear the desk off. You say, this is what I'm going to do today. I'm going to go over here and open up an account with Facebook. I'm going to get a Facebook page. You go over here. I'm going to say, I'm going to open up an Instagram page. And then you start posting some things every day, every other day, and you just keep flowing with it. And that's how simple it can be. And then if you're selling anything, then you can just sell it. If you're just trying to get a, your footprint down, then get your footprint down. Learn what you're trying to learn. But at least you'll have your name and your footprint. Like Stop Struggling Now, I have that name on all platforms. But I was lucky because I got that name only two years ago because I wasn't even into social media. I only did minimal social media when I had my poker stuff going on. But I had... But these, Instagram, Facebook just came out, uh, none of these others, uh, Snapchat, none of this other stuff would even existed. TikTok and all that didn't exist before like 2013, 2012. So 
this is a whole new ball game and everybody we have 7.6 million people 7.6 billion people on the planet come on you guys the internet and social media hasn't even started yet that's why you should get whatever name you want your company to be your consultant agency to be your marketing company to be whatever name you want you should just get it even if you don't use it you should get it because sooner or later somebody else is going to grab it and you won't have your own name because then you can make it a, your domain name and if you have a domain name and you want to get start a business you can get business funding lines of credit and the underwriters always looks at your website they always want to make sure you're in business so that's one of the main things so you why would you want to have a domain name dot net even though that's okay but you should always try to have that dot com because that's the number one that will be in all countries all right back to investing yes Romeo May let me explain a few things so yeah you might be a little jittery right because stock market has dropped uh, well at one point it dropped 30 percent and at this point it's uh if it was at 30 and we're down to around 23 what does that make it about 20 percent now so it dropped 20 percent and people out of work uh jobs are probably going to be lost people are probably going to lose their homes cars are going to be lost due to their loans not being able to be paid credit cards are going to be shut off because consumption is going to go down so right that's the whole point the stock market dropped 30 percent people did not invest when it was 30 percent when it was at 19,000 20,000 points of the Dow people still didn't invest because they were afraid meanwhile those of us who did invest I have to say, 20 to 30 percent on our money ain't bad in a bad environment. So what I'm trying to illustrate is the next shirt, the next mantra that I'm going to put out is one percenters don't lose. So there's always a way to make money in the stock market. You just have to tweak your mind. Now, if you were if you had money in the stock market when it was almost 30,000 points, it might have been 30,000. When it was up there and you you watched your uh, like I told people all like I tell people all the time when my friends were looking at their 401k and it had 1.5 million dollars in it, they were all happy and giggly cuz they were retiring in about a month or two. Then when that thing went down 30%, they were under 1 million dollars. Just like that. And they clawed it back just a little bit, but I feel, still think they had that when they exited out, they were only around a million dollars after 30 years on the workforce. Million dollars. So the difference, though, is when they didn't have access to their money, they couldn't sell. So see, instead of if they would have had access to their money and it would have been 1.5 okay it would have dropped to 1.4 they might not have taken their money out or sold everything when it dropped to 1.3 well maybe about then they might have said okay that's more than 10 percent that's you know you know maybe i'll sell something but when it dropped to 1.2 i'm pretty sure they would have pulled the trigger and said no no i got to preserve my money i'll sell everything then when it went down to 30 percent they could have re-entered the market and they would have had their full 1.2 at their disposal and then if you were like uh, what Joshua Felder is doing and some of the things that I've done your 1.2 would be 1.7 now 1.8 because you have access to your money and you're earning 20 30 40 percent on your money so yeah you can make money anytime you just have to understand what it's called money management in reality. Some of y'all don't know that I used to play poker for a living. And when you play poker and you don't have any sponsors or backers, you can't go to the poker table and bring, if you have $100,000 and you're going to play in a cash game, you can't come to that cash game and put $100,000 of your chips on the table. Because at any time you could lose and have a losing session. 
So knowing that you do not win 100% of the time, money management means you need to bring about 10% of your money to the table or 5% of your money to the table because if you don't win that day, then you only lost a small percentage of your bankroll. But yet we can come back day two, day three, or day four, whenever we want to come back, and maybe that day we win 15, 20, 30%, and now we're ahead. But if we have another losing session, and let's just say 5%, 5%, 5%, 5%, you lost 20% of your bankroll, but you didn't lose 100% of your bankroll. You still have $80,000 left. And if you're any good, you'll over time, you win. So over time, you win 10, 60% of the time, you come out ahead. But you don't win 100% of the time on anything. You have to think of the stock market like this. You don't win 100% of the time because you don't know what's going to happen. Nobody knew a pandemic was coming. Nobody knew this. So therefore, how can you prepare for it? People always tout Warren Buffett. Warren Buffett, that's right, Bowtie Nikki, one percenters don't lose. People always tout Warren Buffett, but I dare anybody. Go and Google when Warren Buffett bought American Airlines and Delta Airlines. Go Google it when he bought them. You're going to see the price was three or four times the amount of what he sold it for. Now, he doesn't care because he has the Berkshire Hathaway group who has billions of dollars in cash sitting around. He was basically thinking, well, I'm not going to take any more losses on this. Let's just get me a few hundred million dollars back and I'm going to use that to buy something else. And obviously, if he bought down at the 19,000 of the Dow level, and he also gets 30 or 40 percent back on his money or 50 percent on his money he's already got that money back and then some so you have to be in the game to win you also can be in the game and lose but over the long term just to be clear over the long term the stock market goes up so if you just stick with relevant stocks i'll, I'll say some names right now at&t for instance verizon i'll stick with the guys that get you there AT&T, Verizon, they both issue dividends. Is telecom industry going anywhere? Doubtful. So, you know, car companies, they may go out of business. But now you're going to pick a car company that does autonomous driving. That would be Ford. That could be Audi. That could be Porsche. Tesla, for instance, they're not going to go anywhere. They basically have software in cars. They're not a car company. They're a software company that has cars. So they're going to have autonomous driving and they're going to have other items in their cars that's going to help people. So these type of companies are probably going to be around and that's why you'll see their stocks go up eventually. Like Tesla, for instance, their stock dropped down to 400 and some odd dollars. Now it's back up to 750. So again, they all, whoever had Tesla at 400, they've doubled their money almost. About 75% of their money. So yeah, always a good time to invest in the stock market. Don't be shy. You can't win. But I, this is why I always say invest in dividend stocks, because even if the dividend stocks go down, you're receiving a check every three months. So that helps you out greatly. Right, right. The CEOs. <laughs> I'm glad you brought that up, Thriller Ali. The CEOs left, uh, yeah, a large hundreds of them. Um yeah, well, I'll tell you the simple fact. Here's the simple fact. Now that we have a, I can, I can give the stories out and tell people why. Uh, 2008 uh, was the uh, Great Recession. 2008, 2009, Great Recession. Companies got uh, hundreds of millions of dollars. What did they do with that hundreds of millions of dollars? They got new CEOs who have stock options. And like the airlines, like the tech companies, they all started buying back their own shares of stock with the people's money. You have to understand that money that the government gives these companies is our tax money. Our great, great grandchildren's taxes are going to be paid. They're the ones that's going to be paying back some of this money. So when you buy back stocks, what happens? 
stock prices rise. And when you give money to Wall Street and the hedge funds and Goldman Sachs type people, they also join in the party and buy those same company stocks. So of course the stocks rise. The CEOs, remember, they have stock options. And a whole bunch of the executive board, advisory board, a whole bunch of people have stock options in the hundreds of thousands. So when that stock rose from $20 a share or $50 a share to over $200 a share now, and they know that Intel briefing that says the pandemic's coming, sell your hotel, travel, and whatever else stocks, get out. They're saying, I resign, give me my severance package. So they get to sell their shares of stocks that are now worth 20, 30, 40 million dollars, 100 million dollars. Exit plan. And they're out. They don't have nothing to worry about. So what if the stock drops 30 percent? They don't care. And that's why they all left early. Notice, Thriller, that uh, all these people left early. They didn't just leave during the pandemic. They were leaving last year. They were leaving two years ago. They were taking their money and running. They got a severance package. They didn't have to take the fallout from when the stock goes down and the shareholders go, hey, what are you doing? How are you protecting us from this pandemic situation and we're losing 20, 30 percent of our stock value? They didn't have to take the brunt of none of that. They're like, I'm out. I'll just take my little, give me my 20 or 10 or $5 million a year in salary. Give me my $200 million in shares of stock. I'm out. They cashed out and they're off on their own little island in their private jets and they're leaving the uh, poor people, ordinary citizens, to fend for themselves. So that's the short story, Thriller. Uh, Romeo, what about investing in multi-units? Yes, that's what I was talking about. Multi-units, two, three, four units, get an FHA loan. If you want to invest in eight, nine, 10, 12 units, then you're going to have conventional financing and you're going to need 20, 25% down. Simple as that. Don't listen to these gurus. Don't pay for a course. They don't help you with funding. All right? They can talk all that gibberish they want. They'll tell you everything on how to buy property. The one thing that they don't have is they're not an underwriter and they're not a bank. So when you say, hey, I know how to get property, I know how to buy it, yeah, anybody can find property. The problem is when you walk up there and that property is $200,000, and you're looking at all the numbers and you're saying, wow, that $200,000 property, it makes $50,000 a year after operate, after expenses and everything. You're sitting there going, this is beautiful. Yeah, well, unfortunately, the banks and the underwriters are going to be saying, uh, we need like $40,000, $45,000. You have that? And you're sitting there going, hey, but look, this is, this is making $50,000 after all expenses paid. I can easily pay you guys... Uh, a thousand dollars a month come on they don't look at it that way you need skin in the game these days so don't believe the hype about any of these gurus they can't help you all right they're not going to help you and don't listen to them go talking about on the upsell oh yeah we're going to be out in some city you can come with us and we'll go on a bus and we can show you what get out of here let me show you that slap across the face come on now they ain't helping you doing finance. They're not helping you get financing. It's plain and simple. Because once you have the finance, once you have the keys to financing, then you can buy as much real estate as you want. And this is why we always talked about building your business credit because you can use an LLC to buy property. It's that simple. So once you have an LLC and you can buy property, that's all you need to know. What's up, Paula? How you doing today? Thank you. I'm glad you found the live again. Um, uh, thank you for contacting me last time as well. And uh, I appreciate your support. Thanks for the comments too. Welcome. So, uh, yeah, don't listen to the gurus. You can find properties, ladies and gentlemen. All you have to do is look. I did a property video probably three months ago. And uh, one of my sources who's in Ohio and he, and he does stuff in Cincinnati area and he always has three plex four plex eight plex properties that are literally 150 dollars 
and he already sends you over the numbers as an investor because it makes no sense. You're not going to invest in something that you're going to buy for $200,000 and after everything's all said and done, you're only going to make five grand. You're not going to want to be on that, that type of leverage. You want to make sure that you have something that's bringing in 40000 a month in profit, 4000 a month, 3000 a month, 2000 a month. That's the only, otherwise, why even do it? So that's all I'm trying to say. I did a video three or four months ago. You got to look at it. Just, just go to the search bar in the Stop Struggling Now YouTube channel and put, type in real estate um, once you're on our page, and uh, it'll come up. So, uh, or you can hit me up in an email, Eric at StopStrugglingNow.com, and then I'll uh, send you guys his link, and you guys can see properties in Ohio. So, uh, anyhow, that's just uh, one of the things. Appreciate it, Paula. Thank you. Yeah, that's right. No gurus allowed. This is the no guru zone. So, we got the real estate. We got the, the royalties. We have your uh, dividend income coming in. Your stock growth of appreciation coming in. So what else can you do? Well, let's just say you don't want to monetize yourself. So what's next? Well, you can go another route. You can start being like scavenger. You know, I call it the scavenger hunt. There's a lot of people that go to auctions, flea markets, and things like that. And then all they do is turn around and post it up on eBay and Amazon. I mean... Or Facebook Marketplace for sale. And people make a living doing that. Or earn extra income. But I know people that actually make a living running around town going to be the first person up when the Craigslist ad comes out and it says free. And then they're the first people that try to show up when that free ad comes out to go pick up their stuff. And then they turn around and post it on wherever they post it. Whether it's Facebook Marketplace, whether it's a, a offer up let go all these apps offer up and let go are apps um, and that's how they make a living doing this just can't believe it they actually also make a living on trash day or the night before trash they have a system where they know where the trash is going to be picked up so they go and drive the neighborhood and lo and behold on trash day everybody's neighborhood has the same thing no matter where you live in the million dollar plus section or the 30,000 and under poor section on trash day, somebody has stuff that I'll just call one man's garbage is another man's treasure. And it's unbelievable that this is what they do, drive around and then they go pick up items and then they put them on Facebook Marketplace, offer up, let go, Craigslist, whatever. And they have people constantly uh, coming around and they're selling the stuff, whether it's $20 here, $30 there, $50 here. It all adds up because in one day, how many people make $150, $200 in a day? Come on. Think about it. Most people earn $10, $12, $11, $15 an hour. So if you can go around and pick up free stuff and make money, that's another stream of income. Paula, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you for that donation. Thank you. I appreciate it. We're going to keep doing it, Paula. You know, that's why this is called Stop Struggling Now, because I'm dedicated to trying to help everybody, OCs, ordinary citizens, because the gurus ain't helping you. When they're trying to tell you to send them $1,500, $1,000, $500, they're not trying to help you. I know what the numbers are. Like I said before, if you know 76% of Americans do not have $1,000, then why are gurus sitting around here telling you, we can help you make money, but first, give me $1,500. Oh. Yeah, go get a go go use your credit card. What kind of nonsense is this? Thinking backwards. Yeah, they're supposedly all rich, this, that, and the other, but they can't help nobody unless you pay them. Yeah, I'm suspect. I got my eye raised. Again, let me come slap them assholes. Anyhow, um, master class, right? <laughs> That's right. No master classes here, ladies and gentlemen. So <laughs> that's what's funny. That's funny. All right. So I want to get to something else, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to pop this over to this uh, other screen. And uh, don't forget to FOSI 25% off with the Sunny 25 code. As you can see down here, don't forget that. Um, it's only good till midnight. But look here. 
This just came out today. This is what I've always been telling everybody here at Stop Struggling Now, and this is the reason why I've been doing the channel. Because here on CNBC, on their website, you can see economic damage from the coronavirus is hitting the lowest level of wage earners the hardest. This is what I always told you. When the economy goes bad, who gets hit the hardest are the people with the least amount of money, the least amount of available services, the least amount of everything. They're the ones that's going to be chewed up, left for dead. Nobody's coming to save you. They're just going to sit there and go, okay, you can live in tents. We don't care that you got evicted. So what? We're just going to deal with whoever can pay us. You got to think about this. This is why you have to protect yourself. This is why you have to figure out ways to make additional streams of income. And everybody, you can always hit me up at Eric and stop struggling now. I have no problem with answering questions. I don't charge a consultation fee. And I know a lot of you say, hey, Eric, they, I get the emails, Eric, well, I'll pay you to help me out. I just tell you, I, you don't have to pay me. I'll help you out. I'm not a guru. I mean, one of these days, maybe I will eventually charge, but right now, I'm not charging. So just send me something. Ask me a question. I have no problem. I'll try and help you. I'll get you in the right direction. If I got a way to get it done, we'll get it done. I missed a question up here that I saw by someone that I wanted to answer. Oh, it uh, must have been Thriller. Joe Joe Caravello, thank you so much for showing up, man. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Uh, let's see. I did hear one guru say that some of the stock investors get screwed. If a corporate company accepts government bailout money, some dividends may get suspended or cut. Thriller Ali, that's exactly right. Here's the situation. Um, whenever the stock market goes down, that's the first thing that most companies try to do. They try to suspend dividends. Ford has suspended dividends. Um, NRZ suspended dividends. A lot of companies. Uh, Dave and Buster suspended dividends. Um, the, the cruise lines suspended dividends. Everybody's going to suspend dividends. The reason why is because the dividends are potentially hundreds of millions of dollars. And until they can figure out how they get back to business, they're not going to issue any dividends. But which companies will continue to issue dividends? That's the question. That's the question. Heartfelt music, thank you. Uh, that's the question, Ali, right? Because you always say, what can you invest in? Think about this. There's two things that happen with stocks. They appreciate, they go up or they go down. So you have to figure out, even if a company's not going to uh, issue dividends right now or potentially for the next two to three months, then what companies will? So everybody's going to keep their Comcast on. Everybody's going to keep their Xfinity on. Everybody's going to keep their CenturyLink on. Everybody's going to keep their mobile phones on, Right? Banks still get bailouts, so bank stocks may be good too, right? Like uh, Wells Fargo is what I recommended. Bank of America, you got about 5 to 7% uh, dividends on your money, even at the prices of right now. So these are some of the things you got to think about. So uh, as far as creating wealth, that's how you keep doing it. You keep doing You keep moving. Otherwise, you can be like basically 90% of most workers or employees, you can set it and forget it by doing what they do. You can say, okay, take $200, $300, whatever out of my paycheck and let it go here and you guys get to match 5% or 10% of uh, my money that I put in there and I'm just working. That's nice, but my same friends who, who put in over 30 years uh, roughly six or seven thousand dollars per month I mean uh, per year into their retirement account I mean that that's a lot of you know a lot of money 600 700 I, I don't know what they're up to but about six hundred dollars a month um, that's seventy two hundred a year so you know when you do this over like 30 years if you would have access to your money even even right now if you would have had access to your money at them type of rates 
and you were still doing the same thing because personally you can do the same thing you can invest and you get a tax write-off ladies and gentlemen you can only invest so much per year but that's you can write that off when you do it personally and you have your own business so again there's reasons when you have your own business there's lots of tax write-offs that occur that can help you out to offset that income so but if you have access to your own funds and you make a commitment and say hey I'm just gonna buy stocks or I'm gonna buy shares and I'll give you guys something else to think about since we're talking about this um, and uh, I, I will say this investors are not screwed when a company does not issue dividends because there are thousands of companies that do not it like for instance Tesla they don't issue dividends but yet their stock has went out of this world. Even in this environment, it still goes up. It went down to 400 and something just a week or so ago. Now it's back up to 700 and something. But they don't issue dividends. So that's where people, you, you don't get caught up in all that. The stock still will rise with or without the dividends. So it's actually a better thing. It's looked upon as a better thing that when the economy goes bad and companies do not issue dividends, their stock usually goes up 5% or so because people are saying, okay, they're being fiscally responsible by not issuing the dividend without knowing what's going to happen three months from now or five months from now. So those are the kind of things that you have to think about when you're talking about investing. There's all these little nuances in investing. But keep in mind, Thriller, Thriller, here's the key. Here is the big number. Up until last year, the top 10% of income earners in America own 84% of the stock market. All right. Did you hear me? Did you not hear me? Top 10% of income earners own 84% of the stock market. There's a reason. They don't care if it goes up or down right now. Over the course of time, it rises. And why? Because there's uh, inflation. There's inflation and they manipulate the markets. And now that the feds are buying up and printing money and helping people out, uh, there's only a matter of time once we get this pandemic situation handled and businesses start going again, then stocks will start rising again. It's just plain and simple. That's how it's going to work. One percenters don't lose. So that's the way you got to look at it. So uh, thank you. I'm glad you hear me, man. Don't be scared is what I'm trying to tell everybody. And that's what the mindset is when a person is not used to something and doesn't understand really long term and doesn't think long term. Then you would always think short term and you're thinking, OK, I have five hundred dollars today. But if I put that $500 in Webull, Robinhood, M1 Finance, and it drops down to 400 I will be crying. But that's not how you have to think of it. You have to think of it as, I put my $500 in here, I'm in it to win it, so therefore, what am I going to do? I'm going to sit there and say, okay, this is a five-year, six-year, three-year, four-year, whatever plan. You're not thinking this is a 2020 plan. You're thinking this is going to be a 2025, 2030, I'll revisit this. But you always want to stay tuned. You know, you want to check in every week or every other week to make sure the company's doing the right things. You just don't want to carte blanche it unless, of course, you did get a Tesla, an Apple, Boeing, uh, Disney, Netflix, Amazon. I mean, come on. These uh top trillion dollar companies you pretty much can just set it and forget it so uh, you know you can be that safe if you want and of course if you had the top 30 uh, Dow stocks seven eight percent per year on average is what they go up actually I'll, I'll give you the better numbers everybody that pays attention to the stock market here's the better number stock market basically goes up on average 10 percent every year if you start from 2000 to 2020 
the average is 10% per year. What people don't understand is, is that like in uh, 2018, the stock market actually was negative 4.5%. Most people didn't realize that though, nor did they care. Because in 2019, the stock market went up like 30%. So it's just a matter over time, it's like 10% per year. The kicker is this though, it all is going to depend on cost of living inflation. And inflation has generally been 3.22%. So this is where the 7% comes in. So this is why everybody says the stock market on average earns 7% per year. Because there's 3% inflation. So instead of 10%, you lose 3% to inflation. So you're around 7%. So, but the one percenters... The J.P. Morgan Financial Division, the Charles Schwab, the Ameritrade Divisions, you know, they have an advantage. And the Warren Buffets, for instance, they have the advantages because they're not earning 7% on their money. They're sitting there taking these little swings. So what I mean by the little swings are those guys were invested in Tesla when it was only $150 a share. When it went up to like $900 a share, a lot of people were unloading them. That's a lot of percentage on their money. If you bought it $150 and you could sell it $900, where do you sign up, especially when you bought a million dollars worth or $2 million worth? This is why the one percenters win, because they have more money to invest, whereas the ordinary citizen might have had three shares of, Am uh, of, of Tesla. And sure, comparatively speaking, Three shares of Tesla almost gets you three thousand, and you only invested four hundred and fifty dollars. That's a big movement right there. So those are the kind of things that you have to think about. So stay long term, like uh, oil. I told people about um, Exxon, X O M is in Mary, three four weeks ago when it was down to around thirty one, thirty two dollars a share. Right now, it was. Above well, it's still above 40. I think it's at 44, 43 right now. So, and they give dividends, even though oil went down, they're still going to issue dividends. They haven't said they're going to suspend them yet. So, but again, the price went up, so I'm happy. And they'll issue dividends once oil prices stabilize if they haven't stopped already. I didn't even keep track because I don't care. My average cost is so much higher or, or so much lower that I don't really care. I have so much room that it's ridiculous. I'm like around $30 average price for owning um, Exxon, which is awesome, which also means I make 10% on my money. So those are the kind of things you think about. <laughs> hey, Thriller Ali. Um, look. I'm just going to put, I, look, I'm not a financial advisor. I'm just going to give you some common sense about this oil situation. All right? I'll give you some history, everybody. 1972, what happens? Uh, president is Nixon. He takes us off of the gold standard. Some of you will correlate now with why does America go to the Middle East with military personnel to protect Saudi Arabia? Why does Saudi Arabia not have their own army? Because when we went off the gold standard, we made a deal with Saudi Arabia where they're backing our dollars. That's why it's called the petrodollar around the world. So therefore, when, go when oil goes below a certain number, like let's just call it $30 a barrel, that usually means America is going to be in trouble. Because we have a glutton of oil. Now we can't move our dollars that much. So now our dollar is worth a little bit less. And we start losing value. This pandemic and this whole little thing was the perfect storm. Russia, Saudi Arabia got into an oil fight. Russia reduced their prices. Saudi Arabia said we're going to reduce ours. People started, the pandemic started. So now we have a glut of oil. And nobody wants to buy it. We're filled. We're full. Tankers are almost full now. All the reserve spots are full. So these guys, OPEC Plus, they tried to meet 
because they need to reduce the barrels of oil coming out of the ground. They all agreed to reduce their production. But because there's so much oil already reserved, nobody's buying. So the oil is going to still stay low. But here's the thing. America is the world currency. And America is doing what they got to do by printing dollars and buying up corporations' debts. Until, wait for it, wait for it, something's going to happen in the Middle East. There might be an announcement by a president talking about we're in a little tangle with Iran. I'm just saying, one percenters don't lose. Yes, they are. And Thriller Ali, this is your time millionaires are made to top off the rest about the oil. This is why I told people a week or two ago, now may be the time to buy some oil. All I'm saying. And at the time, USO is an ETF. They were like at 3 or $4. They didn't drop down to $2.50 or $2. I don't even know. But they're going to do a split, reverse split, 7 to 1 reverse split, which is weird. So for every 7 shares, they're going to make it 1. That's how crazy that is. But Marathon, M-R-O, they do fracking, shale, you know, all that kind of crap. There is only, uh, what is their shares? About $4, $4.50 a share. Something like that. Exxon, they're still at 44. Chevron, they're around 80, 75, 78. They're not dropping. You want to know why, though? The reason why is they're not just in oil. They're into gas. They're into other explorations for uh, energy. So this is why they're not dropping like they should be presently. And this is why... There's certain people around the world and around the country that's trying to open up the economy to get things moving because like you said, Thriller Ali, cruise ships could be absorbing a lot of that gas. People driving back to work, a lot of that gas could be absorbed and now the price starts going up. So this is why anything associated with gas, you should be trying to grab up a few shares of stock. Gas stocks, they're not going to go down to negative even though their futures are negative, but they're not going to negative. You can count on it. All right. Um, yeah, I, I didn't know about this uh, Joshua failure about Credit Karma. I don't know about the update every time you log in. But uh, Credit Karma was sold. Somebody bought them. That may be why you're seeing this now. Somebody uh, bought Credit Karma for a lot of money and they're going to monetize it. So they're going to do things a little bit differently because they got to get their uh, investment back quick as possible for the investors, for their shareholders. It's that simple. So there will be changes at Credit Karma coming, that's for sure. Crypto. I don't really, in, I, have, I have money in crypto, but I don't do what I do with stocks though. Because crypto seems to be altcoins, which are garbage coins most of the time. So uh, Bitcoin is acting like the U.S. stock market. They go up, it goes down. So therefore, that allows people to make money. Uh, what, three, four weeks ago, Bitcoin was at, what, 4700 4800 Now it's around 7300 7100 So you could have made money on the dip. It's almost mimicking the U.S. stock market, which is a shame. Um, and seeing how we live in America, the only thing I don't like about crypto is uh, in the U.S. system, you have to download your money into places in order for you to get turn it back into fiat. That's the only thing I don't like about it. Whereas if you live outside of the country, you have a debit card that's linked to your wallet and you can withdraw it at the ATM machine. Can't do that in America, but oh well. Um, but yeah, that's about the extent of it. Just stay with the major coins, but as it stands right now, it seems that uh, Bitcoin, even at their cost, seems to be top dog. And there's always others, you know, the uh, usually Ethereum, um, which I have some Ethereum as well. Have to, they're like number two. 
and you know that kind of thing just as a hedge because who knows what happens if it goes back up to twenty thousand dollars again per coin like it did like what was it three four years back anything can happen with crypto so um that's pretty much it so again what we got going on today is creating wealth we got if anybody wants to talk about credit we can talk about that uh, excuse me um if you want to talk about earning extra income oh uh speaking of that if you guys want to make a little bit of extra money forget about the uh doing your own monetizing yourself thing amazon fba Everybody and their grandma has this Amazon FBA ad still running on YouTube, still running on Facebook. Well, there's this guy that has a free Amazon FBA course. That's right. It's the No Guru Zone. You know how we do it. So you can go down to the description down below in the box. Down below, there's a link and it says AmazonGPS.com. There's a guy named David Quintiero, Quintieri, who actually has the free course, and I have a link to it. All you have to do is sign up and start going through it. It's lengthy, but hey, it's free. You don't have to pay whatever, $3.99, $4.97, $9.97, $97 for this guru crap. All right? So there you have it. You want to make additional money? You can go that route. Also... We have something, you can go to the uh, Facebook group. There's a link down below, our Facebook group for Stop Struggling Now. In the Facebook group, I have different things. Some people, like I always say, you want to do podcasts, Buzzsprout. That's a free podcast site. You get two hours a week for free. I mean, two hours a month for free. I have a link over at the Facebook group where you can go sign up. You want to do live streams? This is OBS that I'm using right now. And the way I did it tonight was a little bit differently. So I'm starting to get up to par, you know, up in my game a little bit. And so OBS software is free. Also, StreamYards is free. Where StreamYards, you can use your phone. People can call in. You can add people and make it a double screen, a triple screen. You can do all kind of different things. That is free. You'll have the StreamYard logo in the lower left-hand corner, but it's still free to use. I also give you links to Canva where you can create your own images and like this right now tonight I created in Canva what you see on the screen with the Stop Struggling Now Live and YouTube. I made this whole little thing in Canva free. I didn't sign up with a monthly or yearly pay program. It's the free that I used which gives me the, I only can use the free images because I want to use everything that you can use. I don't want to sit here with something that I spent three grand on that only a few people would have and then tell you this is how you do it. I'm Everything I'm doing is free that you can use, that you can start your own business with. It's no special nothing I'm doing. The OBS is free. The Canva.com is free. I tell you guys about Fiverr because when I did the new membership and I added them and, and YouTube was kind enough to have a membership for me at only 5,000 subscribers, which is unheard of, um, I went to Fiverr, I paid a guy for the six images for the badges, I gave him $5 for each badge, and then there's emojis, and I gave him also $5 for each emoji. There's only five, uh, four of them, but as soon as we get up to X amount of members who sign up with the membership on the YouTube channel, then they'll unlock additional emojis and then it'll unlock fifth and sixth emojis that I have so these are the kind of things that we're talking about here and let me see if I can go over on the other screen and I'll uh, show you guys what I'm talking about let's see if we got it here yeah you can see right here there's a join button I'll probably make a uh, video and since I'm not logged in I guess I can't show it but this is the join button, the new join button for memberships. This is basically for supporters who want to, I think the lowest I got is either $4.99 or $3.99 a month. And then it goes up from there. And they're special when I post in the community post here. There'll be members only can see certain posts. And then the, I can do members only live feeds and things like that. 
So, you know, this is what we're talking about. And uh, in case anybody's wondering, you can see the uh, thumbnail there. And I'll just, in case people don't know, I made videos about this before. That background is in St. Martin at uh, where, well, it's their little boardwalk there. And it just so happens that's where the cruise ships and everything docks at their boardwalk. And the reason why there's nobody there is because it's around 4 o'clock or so. And, of course, for me, happy hour is on. And the funny part about this is since they're on a cruise ship, they have to get back boarding on the ship by a certain hour. And I think it's basically they have to have been boarding about that time. That's why you don't hardly see anybody there. So they're getting ready to take off. And uh, it's like goodbye, good riddance, because now there's hardly anybody there. You know, only a few of us hanging out, and it's all you can uh, pretty much, you know, it's island life. All you can drink, all you can eat, have fun, chill out, and it's, I mean, you know, it's not that much to spend uh, or, or cost around there. So uh, it's, it's, it's beautiful. And that's where that uh, image is from. So... Uh, Anyhow, if there's anybody have any questions, let me know. Let me know if you have any questions because the live stream, I'm probably going to end it shortly. And like I said, if anybody ever needs any questions answered or anything, you can always hit me up at Eric at StopStrugglingNow.com. So there's no problems. All right. Let me see if I have any more. Uh... Yeah, Thriller Ali, that's the only problem with crypto, but that's not really a problem, though. Um, oh, you mean backed up. You mean if you if, if you get uh, hacked or the uh, exchange or wherever you keep your money gets hacked, you have no backup like the FDIC? That's true. But that's the whole part about crypto. You have to be responsible for your own items. And uh, you weren't around... When I told the story before, when I used to play poker and online poker basically got shut down by the federal government with the UIGEA law and we couldn't get our money off of the poker rooms and download them into United States banks, nor can we upload money from our MasterCard visas or banks. They blocked it. So at that time... Bitcoin just came out and that's when the poker guys started using Bitcoin to play poker online or trade money. My dumb behind bought like $10 of Bitcoin and it was like, I can't really remember the number, but it was somewhere between 3 cents and 9% or 3 cents and 9 cents. I bought three, bought $10 worth of Bitcoin and then just like, whatever, I'm never going to use it. Little did I realize that I needed to keep this key. <laughs> that key was long gone. I wish it was a bank account. At least that way I would have been able to retrieve it. Now I can't retrieve it. And I had anywhere from, let's just call it 10 cents. I know it was less than 10 cents. But that meant I would have had 10 times 10. So that's 100. I would have had 100 coins. Well, I would add more than 100. 100 coins at this point would be, what is that, 700,000? And then when it was at 20 grand, that would have been like 2 million? I mean, <laughs> I blew it. To this day, I don't know where it is. I've had four or five computers since then. I've had paperwork all over the place. Uh, no way to find it. And I don't even remember where the code would be. But uh, those are the kind of things that's funny. But you're right about that. That's the only drawback. If you lose your keys or somebody else gets your keys, then they can take your money. Yeah, Thriller Ali. Uh, Joshua Felder. Yeah, uh, everybody on your credit report, you should call up the three TransUnion Experian Equifax and make sure you only have one address on there. Before you start fighting to dress you lived at 10 years ago, you don't want that on your credit report. 
You want to go down to one address only and you make sure and you call them up, you send them a letter, whatever you got to do, you got to do it for all three credit bureaus. Uh, everybody, uh, Amazon affiliates, which is different than FBA, but affiliates, you're right, Thriller Ali, they did cut the dividend, I mean the uh, commissions, which is kind of strange. Uh, I don't believe they reduced their prices. So I don't understand why it would matter about why they're giving, uh, you know, associates less money via commissions. It just doesn't make any sense. But then again, everybody, you got to understand Amazon is a hostile environment. Even though you can have Amazon FBA, even though you can have Amazon business and services and things like that, your service and business listed on Amazon, this is all fine and dandy. The only problem with Amazon is they're a predator. So let me give you an example. Let's say you have an, a product. Your product is moving. It's selling like hotcakes. These guys will go and make the same product and sell it under their company name or a pseudo company they made up and compete against you. And they have the right to put their stuff on the front page or higher in the search than you and manipulate the system. That's the only problem with Amazon I have. Just keeping it real. So, nothing wrong with them though. Yeah, tell me about it. I thought when it when it hit twenty thousand dollars a few years back per coin, I was sitting there like, my God, are you serious? I I got like, what is that? A hundred coins times twenty thousand. I got two million dollars sitting somewhere. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, that hurts. <laughs> that hurts, man. It still hurts, actually. Jesus. I don't know where that computer is that I was using or anything either. So I, I'm pretty sure I put it on my computer, the key or the numbers. Because at the time, they didn't call them keys. They just called them your account number. You got to make sure you keep your number somewhere. So I don't know where I would have put that number at. Crazy. But uh, anyhow, let me see if I can get back online here. Are we off? But anyhow, if anybody doesn't have any further questions or anything, then uh, this is going to be, uh, we're probably going to end it here. And before I go, for everybody who is uh, still here, at the beginning of the video, I started with this here. If you can contribute a little bit to everybody pitch in, the link to this GoFundMe page is for minority-owned businesses in California. Um, any donation, five dollars is good. Anything you can get, can donate to everybody pitch in would be helpful. This is the time when small businesses are struggling, and like that article said, these small businesses. You guys have heard the stories where, like uh, Ruth Chris, got millions of dollars of the stimulus package money, and they're not going to give it back. And that some of that money was supposed to go to us. And by the way, the second stimulus is coming out, so you might want to keep checking out the SBA.gov page as well. But anyhow, everybody pitch in. Please go and help out. Even if it's $5, that would be much appreciated, uh, like I said. And uh, my friend is the CEO, and he's also the organizer of this for the uh, Sacramento, uh, California Chamber. They're called the Sacramento... Uh, California Black Chamber of Commerce Foundation and they're taking donations and you can see their lofty goal of ten million dollars and that's a long way to go so if you can help out that would be greatly appreciated uh, like I said the idea is in California there's 2.5 since it's African-American small business 2.5 African-Americans in California so the idea behind this was if 2.5 million put in five dollars then they would reach their ten million dollar goal but let's just face facts some people are sitting there out of a job so even five dollars 
isn't even thought of right now because that might be five dollars of food that they might need so you can't blame anybody for not chipping in and not helping out so this is why since I have a YouTube channel I thought uh, you know some of you might say hey if I got five dollars I still have my job I'll throw in five or if you want to throw in more that's fine too but all I'm trying to say is I figured I'd have to give a little promotion because you know I always say I'm like the California kid and I do live in Sacramento, and it's a friend of mine, too. So I have to support my friends, right? That's how we got to do it and support each other. And that's basically why I'm doing this channel, to help people out. So it's that simple, you know. But uh, I see I lost the video feed on my phone. So unfortunately, I can't get it back up. So I'm probably going to have to end this uh, live stream now because I can't see it. I don't know what happened. It just stopped. And, uh, oh, here we go. I got it back up. Okay, so let's see. I got, I'm got. i trying to answer all the questions. If anybody has any, you can uh, tell me. Uh, you can ask me anything. Oh, Cycle Gamer. Yes. Cycle Gamer, if you have, home, if you have equity in your house, I would, I would strongly advise that you... Extract it right now. Do not pass tomorrow if you can extract it because all banks and everybody's tightening down their credit requirements and they're tightening down their loans and funding. So if you have equity in your home, I would strongly urge you to get that equity line of credit, otherwise known as a HELOC. If they're going to give you a HELOC, I would strongly get it and here's what's going to happen. Just so you get an understanding on the HELOC, they're going to, look, I'll, I'll use a simple example. Let's just say you can get a HELOC and you have $100,000. They'll say you can have it. And you don't use it. You just let it stay there. What could happen is if your house value goes down, they could then block you. Because now, you, even though they said you can have the $100,000, they will they will say, since your house went down, you cannot have it anymore. But if you have the 100000 and you take it out, you're going to have to pay, of course, the interest on it. But if you take it out and your home price goes down, they can't take it from you. So all I'm trying to say is if your game plan is to, to get use your uh, home equity and invest in other properties, let me know what city you're in. Or, or what state you're in or what state you plan on investing in. But all I'm trying to say is make sure you get your money out of your HELOC ASAP. It's worth it. What they say, possession is nine-tenths of the law. And it's not illegal. I'm just saying it's better for you to have the money than not to have it. That's all I'm trying to tell you. But you better have a game plan. Uh, the money, even though it's $100,000... There's going to be uh, IOUs on that because now you're going to be, uh, it's, going to, it's got to be paid back. So every month that you don't pay it back, you're losing to inflation and you're losing to the interest that they're going to charge you. And yeah, it's going to be small. It'll be like, oh, the ATL. Yeah, uh, home prices in the ATL have went up dramatically over the last few years. It's kind of crazy. But uh, multifamily wise, I would uh, pull the trigger if the numbers make sense. And remember, the numbers have to make sense. Just don't buy multifamily property or try to get into investment properties just because. You have to make sure when you buy an investment property, you're not making money on the back end. You make your money when you buy it. So. Like I said, I said this earlier in the video, but I'll say it again since you just showed up. But the bottom line of the story is when you go in, you have to have a plan. You have to sit there and have a figure out a way that if it's an investment property, I'll just stay with real estate. At least most people are real estate. Are you doing something else other than real estate? Because investment property means when I buy it, I already have revenue streams coming in. That's what I'm hoping you mean. I'm hoping you don't mean like your investment property, like you're going to invest in, you know, like a restaurant or something. 
because uh, 99 out of 100 times, they're out of business in a year. So uh, hopefully an investment property, the idea of investment is you're going to have some revenue coming in from your investment. So you can't pick something that's, you know, I, I wouldn't be picking a business because businesses can come and go simply as this pandemic has shown. It has to be something like if it's real estate related would be best because people have to live somewhere. So that would be the safest out of any environment. And in the ATL and the outskirts of ATL, there's properties, but ATL has heated up over the last five years or so. Uh, my parents lived there. Uh, I never lived there, but uh, the homes there used to be so cheap. It's ridiculous. In fact, the homes are still cheap. There's still homes for that are 2,500, 3,000 square feet that are $200,000, $250,000, depending on where you you know, what area of town. But uh, my other recommendation is I would not pick a uh, low-income neighborhood if you're going to be investing. You can get properties that are hella cheap in a lower-income neighborhood, but the problem comes in in, a, in an economy that just happened. A lot of people who have the jobs, they're out of work right now, and they may or may, may not be getting unemployment to pay you. And the way the state governor is working there, he's like lifting the ban, uh, the stay at home, because he doesn't want to pay unemployment. So uh, you got all kind of clowns out here that's trying to hurt the ordinary citizen. So that's the only one of his reasons he's trying to lift the ban, the governor of, it, of Georgia. Uh, Chris Evans, Michael, welcome. Eric, would it be wise to take a withdrawal out of my traditional 401k with the new CARE Act stipulation to get an investment? Uh, yes. Especially if it's an investment property. You didn't hit the nail on the head. Yes. Because you're right. They did, well, allegedly they're waiving it, right? So they're waiving it where you're not going to be penalized. But I don't, I think you still may have to pay the tax on it, though. That's the only drawback. But then again, it's your own money now. You got to pay taxes. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, your 401k, you have to pay taxes whether it's now or when you're 60 years old and it's tax deferred. You're going to pay taxes when, when you withdraw money from your 401k. You just don't know what the tax rate's going to be whenever you retire. It, it's going to be higher. So just because it might be 20% now, it could be 30% later, especially after they're doing this 2060. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's Cycle Gamer. He, yeah, he is an asshole. Yeah, man, he shouldn't even be in the office to begin with. Um, but yeah, back to the 401k. And yes, take advantage. Because otherwise, you would have to pay a 10% fee and the income taxes on it and potentially 25 percent that's right joe joe it used to be 30 percent penalty back in the day depending on well yeah you're right it used to be 30 percent it was 25 30 percent straight out the box but that's because they would take your uh income tax and pay it for you so now though it's down to 10 percent and income tax and now with the uh the care act they're letting people withdraw certain amounts, no penalty, which is a get out of free, get out of jail free card as far as I'm concerned. Because like I told people last week, when, when that stock market was dropping and my friends had that $1.5 million in their 401k and it dropped down and then, and then they had 950,000, 980,000 in their account within like two weeks. That was crazy. And they couldn't do nothing about it because that's what they were talking about to them. They go, well, if you take out the 1.5 or, well, at the time, 1.3, uh, we're going to have to take out like $200,000. They were like, what? What? No, just leave it in there then. They were caught. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. Bow tie.
anti Nikki. All right, my man. You're right. You should have gotten X on a few weeks ago, man. Damn. Too bad you did not. Uh, now don't tell me you uh, you saw my video and you still sat there when Exxon was like 36 or something. Because I do post up on the community, on the YouTube channel community board. You guys, there's a community board here where there's postings. You see this here. I do post up what I'm buying. So... Uh, those are the kind of things that you're going to see. I do post up. Let me see when I posted up the last one. Let me see if I did. Um, here we go. One week ago. Uh, no, nah, that was just... Uh, oh, nope, nope, nope. That was just a link. So on the Facebook page and here, I sometimes will post what I'm buying. Let's see. I can't believe I didn't uh, post something up this week. Well, I posted up on our Facebook group and our Facebook page as I bought uh, Well Tower. I remember buying Well Tower, and which is W E L L. I bought. I can't remember the other two. I would have to go to the Facebook page and look. But uh, those are the ones that I bought. But every now and then, I'll post something up here on our community page. And as you can see, here we go. Okay, a week ago, I bought these shorts for short term. When the market dropped from the oil, and I took my little uh, 5 to 10% profits and ran. Because you knew the 1%ers don't lose. So, uh, yeah, and then I had the Robin Hood link. But anyhow, on the community page, I post up, and anybody that's a, that's a member who joins the YouTube channel membership here with the join button, anybody who joins there, I have a you get member only post as well. So there's a couple of different things. So I help everybody out. The Facebook group link down below is, um, is, uh, the link's down below in the description, so you can go there and uh, get the Facebook group link. And like I said, in the Facebook group, everybody, you got to understand, if you're trying to make money, you're trying to do business, the Facebook group is to try to help you. You can post up your link. You're allowed to post links. You're allowed to post your business. You're allowed to post any social media where others in the group can come over and like or share or comment on your post to help you out um, you can do all of that in the Facebook group and the link is down below in the description because that's what we do here stop struggling now we I'm trying to help everybody all right and it doesn't cost anything there's no cost so you're allowed to do it in the group nobody's gonna ban you nobody's gonna say anything and you, you're allowed to ask questions. You're allowed to do almost anything you want, just like if it's your page. But basically, it's like you're trying to be an entrepreneur. You're trying to make money. Uh, you can make comments. You can post things. I have no problem with that. Uh, oh, Bowtie Nikki. Oh, cannabis stock. Okay. Bowtie Nikki. Look, cannabis, that's always, you know, that, that's one of those things that if it's like a penny or $1 or $2, I, I generally will say do that. You know, I, I'll, I'll, but, uh, you know, until the federal government allow, officially allow you to run cannabis operations without the fear of getting investing, I mean, arrested, then, you know, that that's pretty much off limits but if you want to know I give everybody the same answer I tell everybody the same thing when they ask me hey what stock should I invest in I say first T-Mobile <laughs> I just yeah I mean you could pick Verizon if you want but T-Mobile $30 a share you're gonna be at roughly 7% on your money 7 6.5 to 7.5 percent on your money because they issue dividends every three months. Um, 
Next up is I always say Exxon because they're also reasonable. They're at, well, right now it's at 40 some dollars per share, per, I think. 43, 44, I think it was on Friday. So, you know, you can go there. And then, of course, I always say Ford because Ford is only like $4.75 a share right now. They're not going to issue dividends, but that's part of their reason. That that's the reason why their stock is so low. So, uh, Jay Williams, welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thanks for your support by showing up on the live feed. Everybody, please hit the like button uh, on this live feed. I keep forgetting about that. That actually has something to do with the algorithms. Now I'm playing the YouTube game since these guys are kind enough to make put me in the game by, like I said, giving me join buttons, giving me a uh, little other extracurricular stuff in my back office, trying to seemingly help me out.